Well, the debate was fascinating. So we put together just some highlights from the debate, which we'll show you now. We can't lock ourselves up in a basement like Joe does. He has the <laughs> he has the ability to lock himself up. I don't know. He's obviously made a lot of money someplace. People are learning to die with him. You folks home will have an empty chair at the kitchen table this morning. That man or wife going to bed tonight and reaching over to try to touch their out of habit where their wife or husband was is gone. But I want to open the schools. We have to open our country. We're not going to have a country. People are losing their jobs. They're committing suicide. There's depression. Look at what's happened to New York. It's a ghost town. Talk about plexiglass. These are restaurants that are dying. And it's not the answer. I mean, you're going to sit there in a cubicle wrapped around with plastic. It's These are businesses that are dying, Joe. You can't do that to people. He is the vice president of the United States. And his son, his brother, and his other brother are getting rich. They're like a vacuum cleaner. They're sucking okay, up money president every Trump, place he goes. There's a reason why he's bringing up all this malarkey. There's a reason for it. He doesn't want to talk about the, the, the substantive issues. It's not about his family and my family. It's about your family. And your family's hurting badly. Let's get off this China thing. And then he looks. The family, around the table, everything. Just right. a typical politician when I see that. You're going to have socialized medicine. Just like he went up with fracking. We're not going to have fracking. We're going to stop fracking. We're going to stop fracking. Then he goes to Pennsylvania after he gets a nomination where he got very lucky to get it. And he goes to Pennsylvania <laughs> and he says, oh, we're going to have fracking. And you never ask that question. And by the way, so far, I respect very much the way you're handling this. I have to say. By the way. But somebody should ask the question. If he's elected, the stock market will crash. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. That. Keep talking about all these things you're going to do and you're going to do this. But you were there just a short time ago and you guys did nothing. We did. You know, Joe, I, I ran because of you. I ran because of Barack Obama. Because you did a poor job. If I thought you did a good job, I would have never run. Come on. This guy is a dog whistle about as big as a foghorn. I, he made a reference to Abraham Lincoln. Where did that come in? I mean, you said you're Abraham that, Lincoln. No, no, where did that? No, no. You said, I said not since Abraham Lincoln has anybody right. done what I've done for the black community. And I'm saying. I didn't say I'm Abraham Lincoln. You have done nothing other than the crime bill, which put. Oh, God. Th tens of thousands of black men mostly in jail. And what about fracking? All right, now, let me, now let me, have, let me allow fracking. Vice President I Biden to respond. I never said I oppose fracking. You, you said it I, on tape. I did show the tape. Put it on your website. I'll put it on. Put it on the website. The fact of the matter is Shows he's flat lying. Well, Donald Trump did put it on the website, and we're going to show it in a second, and it is devastating. I mean, uh, basically, Joe Biden was caught out lying blatantly. But so many things, Lauren and James, in the debate, which I thought were fascinating. The key one was the way that uh, Donald Trump managed to really get the idea that he's not a politician, that Biden is the politician, coming out with the spin and the line, oh, it's not your family, it's their family, you know, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, they, look, he called out the Biden cynicism. I thought Biden looked physically weak there. I thought when he goes, oh, God, <laughs> you know, when, when he's talking about, um, you know, the fracking thing um, and the crime bill. But I thought overall the most important thing was that Trump did what he should have done that first debate, which was to be calm, restrained, let the other guy hang themselves and just slowly push them. And that's what he did. He did a really, really good job. The other smart thing that Trump did was he did not make this all about Hunter Biden, because if he had done that, yeah. then Joe would have done the, oh, my poor son, the junkie routine, <laughs> and there would have been a whole lot of sympathy for him. All right. Yeah, I think the best point Trump hits on in these debates is, why didn't you do it when you were in office for eight years? But my favorite part about this debate overall is the fact that afterwards, can I change my vote was searched more than any other time it has been searched in Google history immediately after that debate. Can I change my vote? Can I change my vote? <laughs> and you will never guess where, shock, Pennsylvania was one of the top places that that was searched. Well, that's a bit of a worry, though. I it mean, is, like, if that's exactly. a bit of a worry that a bunch of people in Pennsylvania... By the way, Rita and I are going to be in Pennsylvania Good. in about two days to find out what's happening on the ground. Yeah. 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 Here you go. Back out of the box. <laughs> here. But, but, it's, but, but it is really interesting because I looked at the polls out of Pennsylvania the other day, and the polls right now are tighter than they were in Pennsylvania on Election Day 2016 which suggests to me that Pennsylvania is now within the margin. Hello everyone. So today we're going to be talking about buyer's remorse and the people who have already voted for Joe Biden. 
Well, one of the top search results in Google just recently is how can one change their vote? Or can they change their vote? And we're finding that pretty funny because most of these numbers are coming out of Pennsylvania itself. We say most of the people who actually voted in the first place went too far too fast and they haven't really been paying attention for the past few years whatsoever anyway. If you'd have been paying attention for the past three and a half, four years, you would have seen what you would have saw. You would have saw Trump being this bully, this orange man bad, or you would have saw the reality of Biden and his syndicate crime family. It's kind of funny. Joe Biden does the actual thing that we think he's going to do when the crime bill is mentioned. His first phrase that comes out of his mouth before Trump's even finished is, oh God, because he knows what's coming. He's already heard it from Trump and he's heard it from other people. And he knows that this group has made this possible. And it's just like Trump is saying, he was voted in because of guys like him. And Joe Biden in the debate turns around and talks about families and them having trouble paying for things and them having food on their plate and missing people because of the COVID outbreak. We find it kind of funny with that because the Democrat states were the ones that were locked down first and locked down the longest. There are currently states right now that they are still trying to practice lockdowns, mostly in California. California is the Democrat stronghold. I think a lot of people need to put it in perspective that if you vote for Joe Biden, you are probably voting for more lockdowns. We would actually, at this point, replace CNN with Sky News Australia. All of these liberal left-wing media outlets need to be defunded. If they really wanted the truth, they would acknowledge that Joe Biden and his cohort, Mr. Obama there, were the first ones to build these cages for children. Not Trump, not all these other Republicans, Democrats. Really, that phrase should be on t-shirts all over the country. In quotes, who built the cages, Joe? Question mark. This is why we have the buyer's remorse. This very thing is why they pushed for early voting so hard. They wanted millions of people to go ahead and cast their ballots before Biden's corruption and scandal went public. The Democrats, they knew that this was going to come to light and they wanted those millions of votes ahead of time. This is how the Democrats are. They concentrate solely on vote getting. They changed the voting laws. The more they screwed up and suspected the election count was gonna be low because of this scandal, if everybody just goes out and shows up with ID and votes, it's the end of story. It's end, it's done. Trump gets voted in. We think it's kind of unbelievable and on its face that we have to hear truthful news from Australia and other outlets about our own country. We have so much propaganda in this country right now from the news media themselves that we can't see the truth outside of going outside of the country. We don't actually think anybody should vote for Biden, especially if they're some type of minority. Biden has done so much for the black community already as it is. I mean, he made the crime bill, he supported the Klan, and he promoted racism for literally five decades. He's literally one of the people who designed segregation. He made segregation come to light, and he wanted it. He wanted everyone to have separate drinking stalls. He wanted everyone to have different bathrooms. He wanted everybody to be separated. And we know the whole entire goal of keeping everyone separated was to keep pockets rich. Certain people's pockets. Joe Biden at some point in all of this talking says, quote, you folks at home will have an empty chair at the table. Doesn't creepy Joe know that actually millions of people have not died? Does he really think that millions of people have died from this and that everybody sitting at a table tonight is missing a loved one? Does he really believe that? It's ridiculous on its face. You're talking about 200,000 in a country of literal hundreds of millions. We think that they should be allowed to choose their votes. Maybe you shouldn't have casted your vote way too early, but there's a lot of people out there that don't want to miss it and they have a busy life. So we kind of understand that maybe they should be allowed to change their vote at any given time. Should they decide, look, we saw two days ago 
prior to the election date that we saw something we didn't like. So can we change our vote or nullify it? And I think that should be brought up, and I think that be, should be something that's tackled within our country. We guarantee all you folks out there that you're not going to see this debate highlight on BBC and CNN. I wonder why that is. Joe, at this point, can't keep up with his lies, and he wants people to keep their vote for them. So there's definitely a buyer's remorse in these people right now, and it makes sense. You casted your vote early for who you thought was probably the better candidate, and now you feel as if this person isn't right for America or Trump is better. And I think these people have a valid argument. And we would question something. Biden wants you to imagine that your family member died. He wants to drag that out. Why would you point out to somebody that they're missing somebody so that you can get a vote? It's the same as always with Democrats. It's, we're going to use fear mongering. We're going to use fear tactics. We're going to make you feel bad about a situation so that you can vote for us. And we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it all. We're going to fix global warming. We're going to fix the pandemic. We're going to fix all of this stuff that they cannot fix. Now, remember how unsteady the economy was when Biden was VP. Remember jobs moving to China and America workers that couldn't find new jobs at the same pay levels. Remember how that gutted cities and created the opioid crisis. You know, at this point, you should just go ahead and vote for Trump. So we just don't go back to that. These Democrats knew this was coming. There's nothing that you can say to me that can tell me otherwise. They knew this was coming down the pike. At some point, they knew that this horrible stuff that Hunter Biden has involved Joe Biden in, that they have worked on together, they knew all of this was coming down the line. Don't tell me they didn't because they have the backing of the FBI, quite honestly. So they knew all this was out there. The intelligence agency has already been weaponized. Even people of their own party have claimed as such that the intelligence community is going to be used on you seven ways from Sunday. And that was Chuck Schumer talking about President Trump and elections having consequences. And this election has major consequences for all of us. This is a choice between abolish police or support the police. This is a choice of let's run the streets or let's run the streets. This is a choice whether you want to have more taxation or you want to have more social money wasted. This is about what you already have and what it's going to be taken away. Everyone out there should make a valid point to themselves to look around themselves and say, is this life better? And I think the majority of us would say, this life is better. Outside of the COVID, this life was better. People were making money. People were getting businesses. They were getting out there. The lowest black unemployment rate in American history, folks. So don't tell me things weren't on the up and up before COVID. Biden sells you fear. He sells you fear. He wants you to be afraid, just like any other Democrat. Fear sways your votes. Trump might not be the most pleasant person on the planet, but he does do everything possible to get people out of fear, to stop being afraid, because that's what hampers business. That's what hampers your life, by being afraid. And we've seen it during this COVID, quote-unquote, pandemic. The Dems told you what they needed to tell you early on to get you to vote early, before you found out about what their agendas truly were. Higher taxes, raising your cost of living, fracking oil, your guns, your freedom. You know, general total government control over your life. And we learned a really valuable lesson in this debate, and I think with people voting early. Anytime a politician yells at you about voting early, you know he's worried about something coming down the pike that's probably going to hurt his votes. Or they're worried about the debates making them look bad. And in Biden's case, it was both. This may be the main reason why Obama told everyone to go vote early, because he was in on it as well. The Democrats seriously just don't like that for the first time the U.S. is energy independent. They can't have that, can they? People like Joe Biden make money off of business like Burisma. So America being energy independent, he can't exploit. 
Now, most of the people that are complaining about their votes, they are actually voting for Biden, not knowing his platform on fossil fuels. Of course, they hadn't really been paying attention because that had been a discussion for the Democrat platforms for some time now. These people that want to change their vote, they are against them being against the fossil fuel industry. So they want to change their vote based on that because it's in their best nature to vote for fossil fuels because their lives kind of depend on it. So they wasted their vote. They want to change it. And now that's not going to happen and should know better that once you submit the vote, it's over. Early voting started and the Democrats pushed it and we pretty much knew here at Dang It Dawn that these people were going to be wasting votes. Some of these people actually submitted their votes before they even knew who the running mate was, before they knew Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, however you pronounce the crazy lady's name, is his running mate. And when the truth comes out, it's even worse. Not only do you have this horrible running mate, You also are finding out that Hunter Biden is in a whole lot of hoopla that really should be investigated by the FBI and even beyond. This needs to be taken to court. They need to be tried as treasonous characters. We actually think taking information from the Aussies is actually a pretty good idea at this point. These are just some practical Aussies sitting on the sidelines of all of this America madness. To get your news from them is kind of like going and getting your news from the middleman. Does he really owe anything to you? Does he really hate you? Is there any reason to really go ahead and doctor up the news? No, not for Australia. So we get our news from there. Sometimes it's a little bit safer than the American propaganda machine. We can't even get reliable polls. We saw that with the Hillary and Trump presidential race. We saw that. Hillary was up so much ahead of Trump, and it wasn't even close to the truth. And now we're seeing the same pollsters, the same people, the same exact news media come out and say, no, Donald Trump is so behind. And that was what we saw with Hillary. So the same people are pushing the same propaganda that they originally pushed when it was Hillary. Basically, it's Hillary and Trump all over again. It's the mass media and the Democrats versus Trump This is just round two with a different person. We don't understand how Hillary wouldn't be able to get in and beat Donald Trump, but Joe Biden, of all people, is supposed to beat Trump. We don't buy that. Democrats are very situational with their power. If the more popular thing right now were to have a black person up there, they would actually do so. And they didn't even give a black person really a chance to even run as their president. So it pretty much shows you where they're at. We're hearing, however, in the Pennsylvania race, we're hearing rumors through the grapevine that there have been many, many more early voting tickets out there than normal. Now we're finding out that those are mostly Trump votes. So not only did the Democrats pine for something that they wanted so badly with early voting, and they got it. But not only did they get it, but they also got the extra votes that are going to be needed for a Trump win. So they didn't do themselves any favors. They gave Trump people more time to get off of work. They didn't help their Communist Party. We think it speaks volumes of any situation when the U.S. citizens have to come to an Australian news channel to get their truth and information. It says a lot of the American propaganda machine. We'll leave on this note. The Obama era will be remembered as the time when a treasonous organized crime cabal took over our nation and sold our national interest, assets, and security for cash. Biden being voted in would be only round two of that. I think all of us Americans need to get out, vote for who we think is right, and honestly, I think the best thing to do is pace yourself. Take your time if you really don't know who you want to vote for, and maybe ask yourself, Does your job depend on somebody saying, are you on lockdown or not? Are you important enough to keep working during a lockdown? Because more than likely, the Democrats, once they get in power, they're going to put us all back in lockdown again. Just like Biden said, they're going to put you in chains. 
Anyway, you folks have a good night, a good morning, a great evening, whichever. Please like, share, and subscribe. We really do appreciate that around here. Also, drop a comment down below. We like to talk with you. We like to pick your brain. And we like to hear what you have to think from time to time. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. If you don't hit the notification bell, you may not get our videos. God bless each and every one of you. See ya.